Hello dollhouse people, Whitney Labrie here, and this week we're doing the last episode of the What We Do in the Shadows of Vampire Dining Room. We have a lot of accessories that we're going to be making today, including a nausea doll. Not nausea, but nausea's doll. And I have to say, it did not come without its difficulties. This was the first doll I've ever made, and you know, it had some challenges. But did I get mad about it? I said I don't want to talk about it! Please. Was I a little frustrated at times? I would just go on a calm walk and enjoy nature. Did I get upset? Did I cry? Hardly. Well, I guess with all that said, we should probably get going. So let's start with Laszlo's witch's hat. There are so many reasons to love Laszlo. This character is hilarious on many levels. One of the things that he owns is this witch's hat. Not to be confused with a witch's hat in the way that we think of a witch's hat. This is actually a hat that is made from the flesh of witches. <laughs> Naja, of course, hates the hat. She thinks it's cursed. Of course it is. I think it would be hilarious to have a witch's hat for our dining room to kind of represent Laszlo. I'm going to use two main components for the witch's hat. I'm going to use this Sculpey Living Doll Clay. It comes in this flesh tone color. I purchased this specifically for the doll, which you'll see me use later on. And then I'm going to use some tin foil, and I'm just going to mold it and shape it into a little cone. This is also a great technique for just a regular witch's hat because you could use black polymer clay and kind of do the same thing basically or any color if you want to do a witch's hat in any color you can of course basically I just mold that little piece of aluminum into this little cone here that you see there and then I'm gonna start working with my polymer clay and start molding it into the brim of what will be the witch's hat which is basically kind of just like a misshapen circle once that circle is completed I'm gonna just place my little cone right on top of it and then I just started to pull apart some of the polymer clay that I had already reworked into the thin pieces so that it would look more like a patchwork piece rather than a solid cone hat like you would see in a normal witch's hat. This is because of course this hat is made from witch's flesh that has been sewn together and so that's the look that I'm going for. I did use my smoothing tool to push the clay into each piece so that it, it would be a little bit more solid but also looking like patchwork if that makes sense. So once that's completed, this is what it looks like. See how it's already kind of got a misshapen look and it doesn't feel really solid, which is what I want it to look like. So then I just took my toothpick and I started to just draw lines into it. And then I also did a crisscross pattern to give it the look of patchwork as though it had been threaded together. And right now it's all going to be the same color because I haven't added any pastels. But this is what that's going to look like when you just have the, the imprints with the toothpick. And I did add a couple little warts here and there just because I thought that that would add some interest. I actually have no idea if that's in the hat, in the real hat. But it just felt like something kind of fun to add and gross frozen fun. Now that it's done, I haven't baked it quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab some pastels. I grabbed a fleshy colored tone here, and then I also grabbed a couple different browns. So I'm going to do that fleshy color, that orangey kind of color that you're seeing there. I'm going to go ahead and coat that pretty well. And then I'm gonna take another brush and I'm going to use that with the darker colors. And I'm really gonna focus just on the areas where I did the fake stitching and darken those up quite a bit. And I'm really gonna add quite a bit of color to this before I bake it. And for the warts, I did add a little hint of green and a little hint of like a reddish color. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and bake it. Once it's baked, I'm gonna probably brush on a little bit of color where I think I should, uh, just to make sure that it's nice and even. As you can see in the photographs, there are some feathers. So luckily I had a couple extra left over from the Mardi Gras mask that I did. And I went ahead and added a couple red feathers, a red and black feather. And then I used a little piece of cardstock and a gold embellishment to kind of look like the clasp that keeps the feathers in. And that's it. There's our witch's hat. 
Now I'm going to modify a file and cabinet to represent Colin. Colin is an energy vampire. What I love about this character or this vampire is that he's the only vampire that I think I've actually met in real life. He sucks the life out of you and I don't know if you've ever met people like that that just drain your energy. They're just exhausting to be around. I'm just going to assume that they're energy vampires moving forward in my life. Everything in his life is khaki and gray and next to his bed is this filing cabinet and I just thought it was a perfect piece to represent Colin because it's going to go in the dining room which it feels like it doesn't belong which is the same with Colin's character. He kind of feels like he doesn't belong even though he's absolutely perfect and does belong. So that basically all I did it was a simple modification. I just took this wooden filing cabinet that I already had and I, I went ahead and sanded it and got off all the satin finish and then I took my acrylic elephant gray by Apple Barrel here and I did several coats of that because it, since it's a nice matte finish it already kind of had this very metal vibe to it. Then what I did was I just took my metallic silver here and I painted the drawer pulls and also those little label the little file label boxes that go to the front and then I painted just the interior of one of them because I want that one to kind of hang out a little bit and then what I did I want to add a few files for the file cabinet so I took a real manila file folder here and I took a piece of cardstock and measured out the drawer width because I want it to be exactly perfect. And then right on the folded portion of the filing folder, I sketched out three folders here and then cut them down and made them look like little tiny files. And then I filled the back part with a paper towel so that the files to the front would stay put. And then I put the drawer into my little file cabinet and then added my little files. And I think it really turned out great. All right, so there's Colin. Since the opening credits show us all of these really fabulous photos of all of the vampires from the past all the way up to the present, it only seems fitting that I should have some of those in this vampire dining room. You're dead and out of this world. Basically, I'm sure that you, most of you know what I'm gonna do here. I've just printed up some pictures, some of my favorite ones, and then some of the original cast from the movie also, because I need at least one of those in there. I went ahead and glued them to some cardstock, put those against some frames that I already had, except for one which I had to make. Now, I do have many other photos that I wanna include in this room that are just vintage pictures and some other cool stuff. So I'm just gonna do a few of these. I did a small picture of Colin also more as a Polaroid so that I can include that too. I did seal in all the tops of the pictures with some clear glue. I used just a clear Elmer's glue, but Mod Podge is actually better for this. So you could use clear glue or Mod Podge. And then you can see here, this is what they're going to look like. After I finished painting the frames, I added a little bit of extra gold paint to them. And of course you can see that the paint and glue is still wet in these, but we will definitely make sure they're dry before they get hung up in the vampire dining room. So for the doll, as you probably guessed from my opening, I really had difficulty with making the doll. It wasn't that it was that difficult. I don't want to scare you away from doing it if you haven't. I just personally think that I had a lot of anxiety about making it for some reason. That's probably why I had some issues. Now I watched Jolene make her doll. She made a really great senior doll. She did a fabulous job and she's who I kind of watched to kind of inspire inspire me to make that and she's over at Tiny Keyhole Minis. You can check her out and she's she's really great. So the first thing I did was I made my little armature which is basically using just this small wire. The way I tried to figure out the scale was I just held up one of my six inch dolls you've seen her before and then I drew out a little body and then I had the doll hold the body so that I could make sure that it was the right scale. And that worked out really good, actually. Then I just used my little drawing to make the little armature. And you can see here, I twisted the wires in the center to make the little body. And then I just pushed out the side wire to make the legs and the arms. For the head, I did a separate piece and I made a little swirl at the top and then I attached the rest of the wire. 
So for the body, since it's such a small doll, I'm just gonna do it as one piece and not worry about separating the legs and feet and adding them later. I am gonna do the head separate and add that, but that's the only piece. So once I have my little armature all ready to go, it's the right size. I put it down. I have a little sofa here that I'm gonna be sitting it down to make sure that it's the right scale because we often see the doll sitting in a chair or sofa or something. And so then I took some foil and I just wrapped the whole armature to try to give it the body and the shape that I want. Once I had my little foil doll, I started to wrap the doll in my polymer clay, and the polymer clay that I'm using is this, is that same Sculpey Living Doll Polymer Clay, which I really loved using it. It was great. So you can see here I'm just wrapping my little aluminum foil doll, and I'm just trying to shape it as a little baby doll would be shaped. I did find a photo online of like a little baby sitting down, and I tried to use that as my model. <laughs> And I felt like the doll just kept looking like like almost like a little bear And I wasn't going to add a lot of details to the hands or anything like that being my first doll I just really wanted this to be very simple and more like a cartoon because I feel like the doll looks more like a cartoon than it does an actual person so you can see I'm just setting it down making sure that it's that it's right. The body looks horrible, you guys. It looks so bad. The one arm is bigger than the other arm. I went back, I tried to redo it. I just kept getting frustrated. And so it is what it is, which is fine. I'm just like, whatever, I'm gonna put clothes on it anyway. I don't think that we're gonna be able to tell that much. Now for the head. I basically have a round little ball here and I sculpted this head. It took me forever. I did like three faces and somehow I managed to sculpt the Monopoly guy perfectly, which of course looks nothing like Naja's doll. So I trashed the face and I redid it again. And even though somehow this face looks like Sloth from the Goonies, this is the one I'm gonna stick with. <laughs> And this face, the eyes are too far apart. But I was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to do it. So the shoes there that I've added, those are little tiny doll shoes that I purchased. Those are Mary Jane's and they are metal. So I did put polymer clay inside those and then I just scooted the shoe right up to the little doll legs and then I baked it just like this. I did add a little bit of color to the doll face before I baked it. I just added a little flesh color and then I did a little bit of blush on the cheeks. I didn't paint the body black until after it was baked, just to be clear. Then I found some remnant lace, this black lace at the store, the hobby store, and that's what I'm gonna be using as the clothes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some clothing. It took very little ribbon, obviously, to clothe her, and I did use Aileen's fabric glue to just glue it on. And I did it in layers. I did one at the base to kind of look like a skirt, one around the midsection to look like uh, the upper part of her little body, one around the neck to give her a look of like a high a high necked lace top, and then a little bit around the arms also. And there's her little, the glue is still wet, but there's her little, her little dress. Okay, now I did a combination of acrylic and chalk paint for the face. I really wanted to give this doll a little bit of a side eye because she often has a little attitude. And so I did give the doll a little side eye, which I think that's super cute, but you can see the one eye is just like, way over to the side. I just, uh, you know. So for the wig, I bought this really great kit. And the kit is set up to make the hairstyle that's on the front of the instruction pamphlet. I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different because Naja's, because the doll has the same hairstyle as Naja with the long curls, the bangs, and then the two cones on the top. So that's what I'm gonna try to pull off. What I did love about this instructions though, they were spot on. They're very detailed. It tells you everything that you need. And so I'm just going to have to modify it a little bit for the doll that I have. And <laughs> so far I'm so disappointed that I just can't wait at this point to get started on the hair. So anyway, it comes with a, quite a bit. You could do several dolls with the amount of hair that this kit comes with. All right, so the first thing it says is to go ahead and wrap your doll in plastic wrap in the clothes to just protect them from the glue and spray, which I did. <laughs> And then I, it told me to go ahead and pencil on the hairline. And it actually shows you where the hairline should be. Uh, I did change it a little bit. And of course, I didn't add ears to this doll at all. So, I, you know, that part's going to be covered. I had to think about the fact that this doll is also going to have bangs. So I'm going to start with the bangs. So I pulled the little hair wefts away. 
and separated them out a little bit. And then on a piece of tin foil, I just sprayed a little bit of water and I wet the hair down. And what I did was I took toothpicks because I have these really smooth toothpicks, but they warn you if you're gonna use toothpicks to make sure that they're smooth so that the wood doesn't pull on the hair when you go to release the hair from them. The instructions also said to use more like a knitting needle. That would work as well because those are nice and smooth. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm wrapping these around the toothpicks so that they're gonna give me these really long, tight curls. And I think I'm gonna do about five of them. Because I'm working with such a small doll, I'll be able to cut those curls into two pieces and have two sets of curls. So the next part is just setting them aside and letting them dry. The booklet says to let them dry naturally and not to dry them with a hair dryer. So I just went ahead and set them aside to dry naturally. And while those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the little bangs here. So basically I just took the straight wefts of hair that I have and I glued it directly on to the front of the doll, glued them down. I made a little glued line where I figured the bangs would start in the natural hairline and then cut them to the size to go up and kind of around the doll's face and around her eyes. And at first, before the cutting, she looks straight like she's out of the ring from the girl in the well, if you know what I'm talking about. And then I've cut them down and I kind of glued them down to her face. And there she is with her little bangs. And then on the back, she just looks like a little, a little balding monk. All right, now for the cones for the top of her head, what I did was I took two toothpicks, the pokey part of the two toothpicks, and I added a little glue. And then I took some hair wefts and I just wrapped them around the very tips of the toothpick to kind of give them a look of a cone. And then I put more glue on the top of those and then I set those aside to dry also. And this is what they look like. All right, so you can see here the curls and I'm just gonna loosen them a little bit. Now that they're dry, I'm gonna loosen them a little bit until they come off of that toothpick. And you can see there that I've got these really nice curls. So I just went by the pencil line, I added the glue, and then I added all my curls, all my little curly hair. And then once that's all in place, I went ahead and cut the tiny little cones off the tip, and then I added them to the very top of my little Naja doll head. All right, and then last but not least, I did go ahead and hairspray her with my Super Hold hairspray. Put a little bit on, uh, put a plastic on the kind of the front of her too. I was kind of concerned about her, her face. I didn't want the paint to hit her face, even though I had sealed it already. <laughs> and then there we go. There's my little nausea doll with her weird little eyes. <laughs> but I can't help it. I guess just because she's tiny, she's adorable. And that kind of helps, even though one hand is slightly bigger than the other, one eye is kind of to the side, like sloth. We don't have to talk about that, okay? We're just gonna let it go. Speaking of letting it go, it's almost time to say goodbye to this amazing dining room. I have had so much fun putting this together. I do want to say a thank you to a viewer and a tiny friend, Mindy, who sent me this amazing clock in the mail. I absolutely love it. She said I could do anything I want to it, but I think I'm just going to leave it just how it is. And then she also sent me, this is awesome, this goat. <laughs> I am so in love with this goat. Nausea in the show, of course, referenced this goat. She actually hates the goat. So I'm going to put it in her little corner over here. The nausea, I'm going to call it the nausea corner. And I'm going to go ahead and put this together. So thank you. Thank you again, Mindy. I am absolutely so appreciative. I think you're awesome. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and push that subscribe button. Don't forget to push notifications so you don't miss any other videos. And as always, I love to hear from you. So please, please, please feel free to comment and please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. 
Now for the Laszlo slash Colin corner, I'm calling it. I am going to put this hooded chair over there. This is an amazing hooded chair. I love this chair. This chair is also sometimes called a porter's chair. This one is all gold wood with a, a burgundy velvet seat. This one is made by JBM. And if you're interested, I did purchase a few extra of these and they are currently in my eBay store. I think one actually already sold, so I think I have one more left. But anyway, I'm gonna put that over here. That's gonna represent Laszlo. He often sits in a chair similar to that. And then, of course, I'm going to put Colin's file cabinet right next to it as a little side table. And we'll go ahead and add the additional accessories and photos. All right, and for Nandor's section over here, we've already seen the coffin in the last episode. I'm gonna go ahead and place it here, a little side table for him and some great accessories, including of course his own photo. Ooh, I almost forgot. Minnie sent me these really cool cobwebs too, so I definitely wanna include them in this room. Thank you so much, you guys. It has absolutely been a blast doing this room. I have hoped that you have loved it as much as I have loved doing it. Now that we've said goodbye to what we do in the shadows vampire dining room, where shall we go next? Hmm, how about up here? Expecting someone else?